So today's session says, okay, if not um, cookie cutter, if not spray and pray, if not flavor of the month, if not dip and go, then what? And the answer is, is to start to um, take a bespoken approach. The answer is start to customize leadership development at all levels of our organization and to send a really strong message, you know, that it's, it's doable, right? Right. It, it is doable, Reggie. And, and so many times, um, I think we we struggle with that, right? The the concepts sound um, uh, just you know kind of out there and uh, and very conceptual, and and they're challenging for us to say, okay, well, how do we roll up our sleeves and actually make sense of that? How do we change the way that we go about our work to get after that EVA? And so yes. today is all about that. It's all about hey, this is doable and let's let's really unpack this and let's see how. Let's try some of this on and, uh, and see how we can go about um, building things differently and then adding that customized piece to it. Yes. So, so here, here's the deal. We can do it. It is doable, but we've got to understand our path. We have to understand our critical pathway on how to how to get there, how to get closer to EVA. So first of all, well, what's a critical path, right? So so it's the it's the stones, you guys, that we're going to put down, that we're going to lay down that help us to get from here to where we want to go. It's the things that absolutely must happen. Um, in order for us to, to move closer to that EVA, EVA, excuse me, if we don't, it simply isn't going to happen for us. Right. It's not like we can wish it and make it, make it appear, right? Yeah, agreed. Um, so as, as leadership practitioners, as leadership development practitioners, there are multiple ways that we get about our work, that we get our work done. We might use a number of different interventions to move towards EVA. We might use things like um, maybe a coaching intervention, or we might use a training intervention, a development intervention, um, maybe a team building intervention, or, um, or we might support the business planning process within the, the departments or the functions that we work with. All of those are interventions that we use to do our work. So let's pick, let's pick one. Let's say, let's pick development. Let's pick a hard, let's pick a hard let's one. Pick right. a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to pick development. What we're going to do is we're going to unpack its critical path so that we can see, all right, well, how do we get about moving closer to EBA? What does that really look like? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, and so, and so I want to, you know, I, I just want to kind of play this back to you. So we're going to take a really challenging intervention, not like a training workshop, right? Um, we're going to take an intervention called development, like thinking about how you develop a leader over time. Yep. And we're going to understand what its critical path is. And then we're going to understand how can you customize that? Because when you customize it, you become anti-cookie cutter. You actually become bespoken, which gets us at creating EVA, right? Exactly. Okay. I'm with you. Good, good. So let's uh, let's talk just a little bit more about this development intervention. What um, you know, kind of so that so that we can wrap our heads around uh, what yeah. it is. So, so many organizations um, engage in a development intervention, Reg, to to make a concerted effort to develop their leaders kind of their way. It might be referred to um, possibly as XYZ Leadership Development University or Leadership Correct. University, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And the objective of those types of interventions is to, again, build that understanding of what it means to be a leader here in this organization. What does that look like? And most, uh, most likely in that 
in that intervention, there is some sort of assessment process that says, okay, okay, leader, here's how you measure up to those standards that we have in our organization for kind of what good looks like or what our expectations are. So it's big programming, Reg. And, and there's a critical path to follow when we design a development intervention like That's that. Right. So, so let's let's focus in on that first. Yeah. And um, as back it, and it, build a customized piece. It is, it is, it is the month of giving. And so I come prepared today with a prop for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> as, you, <great. laughs> um, and, as, as you walk us through this critical path of leadership development. Okay. So are you ready? I'm ready. Um, okay, good. Let's do this. So our first stone on our on our critical path is some sort of introduction to leader excellence, right? And Reg, Reg it's a little hard to, it's kind of hard to, so it's on leadership, right? Um, and what's happening here, you guys, it, is we're going to be focusing in on what is leadership excellence? Um, why is it important to the organization? What value does it bring to the organization? And, and again, we're going to include some definitions around what that looks like, um, what leadership excellence is, and some way to measure it. So, so think some type of assessment. That's what's going to happen in our first kind of section, uh, our first stone on our critical path. That's right. The second stone on our critical path is all about me. And the focus here is really on, um, on helping our participants, on helping our leaders become better leaders. So mm -hmm. we're going to need to unpack what leadership excellence looks like for the leader we're also going to provide, need to provide some feedback to that leader about what does it look like for you currently and how do you measure up again against those standards. And we're going to need to provide some individualized experiences for each one of our leaders um, so that they can develop in the way that's right for them, Reg, so that they can build those muscles to mm -hmm. be that better leader that, that we know that they want to be and that the organization needs them to be. That's right. All right. So stone number three, stone number three is all about my business. And the focus here is on helping our leaders to, to run their department, to run their function, to run their territory better. So again, we need to help them understand what that looks like, what business excellence looks like for them. We mm -hmm. need to provide them some feedback because again, what, how, do, how are they measuring up against the standard within the organization? What does that mean for them? And then how do we provide those individualized experiences, experiences that um, are going to help them develop in the way that they need to develop, to develop and build those muscles that will drive the results that are important to them in their, in their area of responsibility. That's right. Okay, so we're to our fourth stone. So right. stone number four on our critical path that we're walking down is making it matter. And making it matter um, is all about focusing on creating an experience for the leader, for our participants to pull everything together, to kind of um, put it all together, if you will, into, into a, a project or a, a, something that they need to do around their actual work in their mm -hmm. area That's of right. responsibility. Think mm -hmm. about it in terms of maybe um, oftentimes uh, we'll say a capstone project. That's true. Um, yes. But it's a capstone project that's tied to their work. Mm -hmm. which I think is, is um, very, very important for us to remember. That's right. Okay, so now we're to stone number five. It's our last stone in our critical path in our development intervention. And this stone is all about measuring impact. It's, um, it's focusing in on understanding, well, what's the impact of the work that has been done? What's the impact of all of those action steps and action plans that the leaders put together to work on, on the areas that are most important to them to build that muscle, if you will. So what's changed? How has it changed? What difference 
isn't making. Mm -hmm. This piece is really, um, you know, it's, it's all about, did it matter, right? What, what, what is the impact that we are making individually and from a programming perspective? That's right. You know, um, listening to you talk about um, a critical path, it, it reminds me about the, actually the first time that I learned what a critical path was. I used to um, lead something called an Institute of Technology, um, which was the, the uh, training and development arm of um, an IT group inside of uh, a financial services organization. And, you know, I didn't just learn that the, the, the technical meaning of a critical path, I learned the business meaning of a critical path. And that was, what are, what are the things that absolutely have to fall into place? And when do they need to happen? Because if those things do not um, occur, and they do not occur on time, the entire project will not arrive um, on time, on budget, on objective. Mm -hmm. And so what I hear you saying, Wendy, is that there's a critical path for um, leadership development. There's a critical path. We're not talking about a workshop. We're not talking about coaching. We're talking about a critical path for leadership development. Mm -hmm. And what I wanna do is talk about this critical path just a little bit from an empirical perspective, mm -hmm. because this is not just a, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use Vid's work, words, words from last week, you know, a mystical, magical, right. um, you know, um, notation about stuff that you think you should do. No, this is empirical about the things that you need to do if you want to get EVA from your leadership development. So um, first, I love that you started out with um, on leadership over here. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's so much data on why you would start there, why this is part of your critical path around organizations. Again, just to bring up last week's um, fence post, organizations that take a refreshed approach to leadership, especially purpose, creativity, and analytics are seeing a 2.3x growth rate compared to other organizations. I love number two, that you included something about me, that it's about leader and leader competencies. And one of the things that we know, for example, about the importance of including this inside of your critical path is that there's so much fantastic research on the, um, on per the performance differential, on the things that, um, that help us to understand why some, are, some leaders are fantastic and why others are not. And we know, for example, that up to 72% of the performance differential of those that are exceptional um, fall back to about eight to 10 critical leadership competencies. So I love that you included this. Mm -hmm. I love that you included this piece about, but how do I run my business? Right. And this to me is a piece that is new inside of the critical path for leadership development, right? And why, why do we know, why does this have to be included? And we know, for example, when you help an organization to understand the critical practices about how you might, a team leader might drive his or her operational line, or a salesperson might drive the work inside of their territory, we know that those, when you work on those critical business practices, it's a 4.1 to 4.2 X factor change in their revenue. Right. And, and, you know, Reg, I love that you said, hey, this is a little bit new. This is something new that we're able to, to mm -hmm. build in now that we haven't been able to build in before. And it's the so what? It's right. the, that's exactly right. I get back, here's what I do. Here's what I should be doing. That's here's right. Political business practices and leaders love it because now that's we right. can finally say, go do this. That's right. Because I think what's happened when you look at this critical path, there's, we, we, we maybe have recognized in our, in our business, like I've built so many um, leadership programs for, you know, for organizations in the past, but this piece we, we is, is new. We used to go from here to here, to here, to here. Yes. And I love, so I love that you included this and, you know, it's this piece right here 
um, about the leader and about the business that actually is going to connect to what we're going to talk about in our first January session um, in, in at Rejuvene. We'll talk a little bit more about that in, uh, at the end of this uh, today's session. But Wendy, I love that you included this and there's empirical reasons why we include this as well. Right. I love that you put this piece in here called on our application. And I think you used a phrase called, you know, um, putting it all together, you know, or, or focusing making on it, what making it matter, ma making it matter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here's the thing, there is actually a lot of data out there. It's data that um, has um, been done by the University of Michigan um, and has been published in the Journal of Applied Psychology around it's something that is called um, after event reviews. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is how, um, if you build structure into this application portion of your leadership development, if you just build structure into it, you're going to help increase the conscientious learning level of any leader. And so I love that you included that. Mm -hmm. And I love also that you included this final piece of your critical path, which, which I would use the phrase on our analytics. It's this additional metric piece. Um, it's this additional metric piece that you've included in your uh, critical path. And why is that important? It's important because all leadership development practitioners now have the ability uh, to start to get on what we call the IPO highway. Right. And it's a way to be both predictive and prescriptive with our leadership development analytics. So I am in love, and I, I think that's like love caps lock um, <laughs> around your critical path. And your critical path is the new now next way to start to get after um, leadership development. 